Hey everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, I will show you how I model this VSP in Cinema 4D from start to finish. If you are interested in the render part, you can find it on my Patreon page. Now, let's get into the tutorial. This time, we are not going to use any image planes. Instead, I will use this uh, image as a reference, by the way. And this is called PureRef. If you are interested, you can look it up on Google. It's great for this kind of references. Now let's add in the first object, which is going to be a sapphire, because I want to start off with the top section, as it is the most challenging part of this object. And it's going to be quite easy to model that part with a primitive, like a sapphire, but we need to make some adjustments. First thing first, obviously, we want something low, like eight. Then I will change its type to hexahedron. Now let's make it editable, go into points mode and delete these points. And this one as well. Then I will hold down Alt and add the symmetry. Now we need to measure this on the Z as well. So I will enable this, then enable Vault, then we are good to go. Now let's go ahead and add in a loop cut somewhere around here. But it is supposed to be really close to that center edge loop. Then select these new edges, then make a fill selection, then extend this out. I can't tell the shape from this image, so I'm gonna eyeball it. Then let's select this by double clicking, hold on control and move this down. Let me turn this off. I can't see anything. Okay. I think we got the rough shape. Now let's go back to the symmetry and make it editable. Hit C. Move that out of that group. Then let's try to make this shape as uniform as possible, which means that we need to drop in some loop cuts. Uh, where is that? Loop cuts, hold on shift, add this one in, then increase up the segments. Like five. I want these polygons as square possible. Then add these ones in. Okay, we have got the raw shape. Now let's start to work on the details. And the first thing I want to work on these corners. Because if I put this one under uh, sub D and add in a disk as a reference, you are going to see that these corners are not smooth or round enough. So let's increase up the segments. And you are going to see what I am talking about. This is the shape we have, and this is a perfect disc. So in order to have better roundings, I will move these points around, like on the Z, then these ones. Okay, now the shape is looking much rounder. Now I will do the same thing in the front view. Select the disc, change its orientation to Z, and then position it. Select the mesh. And again, move these points around until you match it. Okay, now it is going to be much better. Let's get rid of that disk. By moving these points, we broke the uniformity of the mesh. So let's hold on shift and add these two loops in. You don't need to worry about on the other side since I will override the left side on the right side. So to get that detail, I will add in a sphere, move it out and make it larger. Then I will let me delete that one and put this one under a bool, then put that sphere under it. Nice, but first we need to close that cap, the bottom cap. Select the first object, go into edge points or polygon mode, then use close polygon hold tool. Okay, now it's going to be much better. Now we need to move that sphere around to, to match it to the reference we have. I'm going to make it larger. Yeah, something like that, right? I mean, it's not going to be possible to, to match it perfectly, so I'm going to eyeball it because it's not possible to tell it without any image planes or blueprints. So I'm going to eyeball it and that looks quite fine to me. Now we need to match these crossing edges. So select the sphere, then lower that down to something like 24. Let me see if I can drop that down to something like, I don't know, 18. 
Yeah, yeah, let's keep it like that. Remember, lower is always better. So let's select the pool, enable create single object and make it editable. Then I will go into points mode, go to the top view, rectangle selection tool and delete these points because I will use another symmetry. Delete that angle. Now let's go into points mode and grab polygon pen tool and start to clean up the mesh. These are going to be quite easy. Hold down control and remove them. Then whenever you see a bunch of points, just grab rectangle selection tool. Sorry, brush selection tool. Select all these points, then use weld tool. It's going to be much easier. Uh, like these ones. On these polygons, we need to be just a little bit more careful. So the first problem we have is that engan. So in order to get rid of it, I will try to add this one in. Then this one, get rid of that edge. Then I'm going to change the flow of that edge loop by removing that edge. Then I will move it over here. And the distance between these points should be roughly the same. So I'll move these around. Then let me see. Let's go to the top view. I'm going to move this in. Okay, now we have just triangles. So first, let's get rid of these. Then I will double click on that edge loop to select this one and dissolve these edges. Next thing we can do is add this edge in so that I can get rid of that one, which will make everything quad. I'm going to right click on that axis and set this to world. Next thing I want to do is change the position of these edges to make the top section a little bit rounder. You should keep an eye on each panel whenever you move the points. Okay, now I will add this one in. We have this point, so I should find something to connect this. Let's try this one. I'm going to connect this one to this one. Then I will be able to create that edge loop. Then I will slide this. Then move this around. I'm going to try to even out the surface. Okay, now let's drop this one into a symmetry object. I will enable Z, enable Weld. We can increase up the tolerance or threshold to merge these points in the middle. Nice, now I want to put this one under a sub T. Obviously, we need to make these edges sharper. So let me double click on this. And hold down control and clone these in. I will do that one more time. Okay, let's enable this. It's NNA. Check the mesh. All right, looking quite well. We need to make just a few adjustments. All right, nice. Then I'm going to move these out just a little bit let me slide this to the right let's move them up i'm trying to match it as much as possible to the reference we have
yeah, let's say that this is the detail we want. Obviously, you can spend more time on this. Like, you can move these up. Okay, I think this is going to be okay for me. And now let's try to get that detail in the middle. So let's turn this off and go to the front view. I will add in a disk, change the orientation, scale that down. Then I will set this to six. Six is great for this kind of semicircles, but I need to rotate it. 30 degrees so that I will have these straight middle edges. Then I will hit W to go into road coordinates, then move it to the left and then up. I will hold that control, make another one, then I will combine these two, go into edge mode, hold and control and finish these edges with Oregon pen tool. Now let me move these out, then Right click, extrude tool, enable caps option, extrude these across. Okay, I will enable this symmetry. Let's, let's hit NNB. Then I will put this symmetry under a bool. Then the disk should be below that symmetry. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I believe we need to scale that up. Then I will go into points mode, select these. Yeah, something like that. I'm gonna overwrite the left on the right so you don't need to worry about the right side right now. And let's check out these crossing edges. Yeah, I can connect these easily. Then these ones. Okay, I don't think we are gonna have a problem over here. So I can click on create a single object and make this editable. Again, we can just delete these points. Then, polygon pen tool to clean up the mesh. I will switch to slide tool. Hold on control. You can also merge the points with the slide tool by holding control. Then polygon pen tool. I want something similar on these polygons. So let me go back to the slide tool and slide these up. Okay, let's double click on these edges. Hold on control and extrude these two times so that I can use these as supporting edges. Now I need to zero out. Position and, position and size of these selected edges because I will use another symmetry. So this should be perfectly straight on the X axis. So let's come over here to the X and zero out uh, position and size of these edges. Now let's put this one under another symmetry, enable Z, enable Weld, and enable sub -D. Perfect. I'm really happy with the results. Now let's make this symmetry editable because we need to work on the other details. So I hit C, then uh, firstly we need to close that hole. Close polygon hole tool. I will switch to the patch one and rotate this new geo around. Let's change the patch width. Okay, that looks perfect. Now let me make a point break selection to select these flat polygons. Then I will make an inset. Move this down. Then I will make another one. And hold down control. Move this down. This time I will just scale this in. And yeah, that's going to be it for this part. Uh, obviously we need to make this a little bit longer. Yeah, something like that. I will add these in to make the mesh as uniform as possible. Speaking of that, let's select these edges, right click and use equal spacing tool. Okay. 
I'm gonna scale this apart. So we design scale them on the X. Okay, let's not forget these spotting edges to make these edges sharper. And I will make another funk break selection and make any sets. Okay, lastly, we can double click on that edge loop. I will bevel this with one subdivision. Then select these edges in the middle and scale this. Hmm. Hit Q. We are gonna need these ones. Obviously, we are gonna need to split out some parts, such as the top section. So while these edges are selected, I will make a fill selection. UNP, go back to the original one and delete these polygons. And I'm gonna I will call this top. And then we can split out the bottom section. Like I can. Double click on that edge loop, make a full selection, split them out, go back to the original one and delete. This is gonna be mid, and this is gonna be at the bottom. By the way, we can have a better topology on the bottom polygons. So uh, let me select this polygon island, then shrink the selection, UN key, delete, and use that close polygon hole tool again. Let's reset this. Okay, perfect. Uh, I need to group them. I'm going to call this USB. Also, let's put some materials on this to get a preview of what these are going to look like in the render. So this one is going to be on the top. Let's make it black and rougher, like 0 0.5, 0 0.4. Then another one. Is gonna be on the bottom and it's gonna be really really shiny like 0.05 and oh sorry sorry this should be on the mid at that one on the bottom I will orbit around my mesh to check if we have any kind of creasing or pinching but this is looking perfect. Now let's go back to the front view. Yeah, the rounding is quite well. Same here. I will call this a success. I know these don't match perfectly, but you know, I tried to eyeball it because I didn't have any image plane. But that turned out pretty good. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and learned something new. If you have any questions, you know, just let me know and I will see you in the next ones. Bye.